The sprint race is over into Lagos and Max Verstappen takes yet another dominant victory. But what did we learn? Well, in this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the data and doing a data analysis from today's sprint race. Now, let's get into the video. As usual, I'll be talking about Aston Martin, McLaren, Ferrari, Mercedes and Red Bull later on, so stick around for that. The sprint race today saw the vast majority of drivers opt to use soft compound tyres as the teams and drivers are looking to save medium tyres for the main Grand Prix. And because of this, tyre wear was amazing major factor today and we could see that some drivers were really struggling with tyre wear and to show that I have the times of Lewis Hamilton who was on the soft tyres and he was a driver who we could really see struggling today. Hamilton opted to push hard at the beginning of the race and because of this he really suffered towards the end of the race when the tyres had worn out. He had no pace at all and if the race was one lap longer then I believe he would have been passed by both Carlos Sainz and Daniel Ricciardo. Let's take a look at his fastest lap in the race and compare it to his slowest lap at the end of the race. And what can we see here? Well, what we see here is that because of the tyre wear, Hamilton just cannot get onto power as quickly as he could earlier in the race. And also he is forced to brake and slow down more due to not having as much grip to take the corners at any speed. Also, when it comes to the exits of corners, traction is non-existent and so he is very slow to get back to full throttle. This is something that all the teams need to be worried about for the main Grand Prix. The hard tyres are unlikely to be used, meaning that they will need to probably do a stint on the soft tyres. If they are going to be using softs, they need to make sure that they can keep the tyres long enough that they can get away with probably using two medium tyres during the Grand Prix, as I do expect it to be a multi-stop race. So, with the sprint race in the midfield, what teams were looking good and what teams were not looking so good? Well, one team that did not have a great race was Williams, as Williams are still looking to make sure that they can secure a 7th place in the Constructors' Championship. Logan Sargent was one of the few drivers that opted to race on the medium tyres, and he just struggled for pace and finished the race in last place, despite the fact that drivers on soft tyres had absolutely no grip left whatsoever. His teammate Alex Albon did perform better and finished 15th, but for Williams, this is not a good result. The team is still not secured in 7th place, especially with AlphaTauri's recent turn in form. Let's now take a look at the times of Albon and Sargent so we can do a little comparison between the two. Here you can see Sargent really did struggle with pace in the end. He spent a lot of it stuck behind the Alfa Romeo, meaning that we didn't get to see a true comparison. But even so, you can see how Sargent is lacking pace when compared to his teammates. I feel like if Albon was on the medium tyres, then he would have got past those Alfa Romeos. Williams may have not had the strongest weekend, but one team that did in the midfield was AlphaTauri, as Yuki Tsunoda scored some very important points, and Daniel Ricciardo was on the fringes of some points as well, and AlphaTauri are in a strong position for tomorrow's race. Let's now take a look at the times of Ricciardo and compare it to the Mercedes of Lewis Hamilton. Early on, as we expected, Hamilton in the Mercedes did have stronger pace, but as I mentioned earlier, Hamilton uses tyres hard, and despite Ricciardo being in a race-long battle with Piastri and Sainz, by the end of the race, his pace was significantly stronger than Hamilton's. Sonoda also had similar pace. This is a positive for AlphaTauri. They have a lot of work to do in the Grand Prix, but if they can keep this up, then there is a chance that they could score some valuable points as they try to continue to get closer to Williams. I just want to say that if you are enjoying the video, then I would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe for more F1 content. I'm on my way to 5k subs, and I would really appreciate it if you help me get there. Now though, let's get back to the video and let's talk about the top 5 teams, starting with Aston Martin. For Aston Martin, they showed impressive pace today, and it was the first time in a while we really got to see them battling the other top teams. Alonso had to make his way through the field after getting involved in an incident with Esteban Ocon in the sprint shootout, but even so, he still managed to race some of the McLarens. This whole weekend, we have seen more of the Aston Martin of old. They've had strong pace, and it looks like when it comes to tyre wear, they're in a good position as well. And when you compare the times of Alonso to Piastri, you can see exactly what I mean. This is the first time in a while that they have had comparable pace for a lot of the race. You can see that Alonso actually had stronger pace for some of it. For Aston Martin, this is a brilliant position to be in, given their qualifying position for the Grand Prix. They may now actually be in a position to legitimately finish the race in the top five with one of their drivers. 
For McLaren, the sprint race today, we got to see just how much out of position they are for the main Grand Prix, at least with Lando Norris. In sprint qualifying, Norris was able to score pole position, showing just how strong they are over one lap. And in the sprint race, Norris was the only driver who could maintain pace on the soft tyres with Max Verstappen. With that in mind, let's now take a look at the times of Norris and Verstappen. In the mid portion of the race, Norris actually had stronger pace than Verstappen, which is something we've not really seen this year all too much. In the main Grand Prix, luckily for Verstappen, there is plenty of positions between the two drivers, and McLaren have a lot of work to do. But this sprint race tells me they should be very confident that they can at least get one driver to potentially finish on a podium. For Ferraris, today's race was a bit of a concern in my opinion. Charles Leclerc spent all of it racing with Yuki Tsunoda behind him as the Alpha Tauri had very strong pace, and his teammate Carlos Sainz was under threat from Daniel Ricciardo, and only beat Ricciardo thanks to Hamilton struggling with pace even more than the Ferrari duo. To show how bad Ferrari's pace actually was today, I've brought up the times of Charles Leclerc to Norris and Verstappen. Here you can see that they are absolutely nowhere when compared to these two drivers. And this is going to be a concern for Ferrari in the Grand Prix. Yes, Leclerc is starting in second place, but they will be under threat from the McLarens and the Red Bull of Sergio Perez. Verstappen will probably already have left Leclerc for dead by a few laps into the Grand Prix, even if Leclerc gets Verstappen off of the line at the start. As I mentioned for Mercedes, they had a shocking pace today, and that pace was worse than Ferrari that I just showed. Lewis Hamilton absolutely destroyed his tyres in the sprint race by using the grip and life early on in the stint. Teammate George Russell was in a similar position, but he managed to just keep the life a little bit better. And let's take a look at the times of Leclerc and Hamilton. Early on in the stint, it was actually pretty comparable between the two, but as we saw earlier, towards the end of the race, Hamilton's pace dropped off a cliff. Luckily for Mercedes, there is still a buffer to Ferrari in the Constructors' Championship, but this Grand Prix is going to be difficult for them. Not only do they look hard on tyres, but also it looks like they're slow in a straight line, meaning that they are going to struggle to overtake and may be susceptible to being overtaken pretty easily in the Grand Prix. And finally for Red Bull, today showed me that they are in a fantastic position for the Grand Prix. Max Verstappen had incredible pace, but not only did he have great pace, but Sergio Perez also looked strong. Perez is in a great position to make his way through the field, as Red Bull had incredible straight line speed, which will make overtakes very easy to come by. To show this, I have brought up the fastest times of both Russell and Perez. Note that both in these instances have DRS. Despite them both having DRS, you can see just how much of a speed advantage that Sergio Perez has over Russell. It's absolutely enormous, the straight line speed advantage. And this is going to be key for Perez to get through the field. If he can be efficient with his overtakes and the use of his DRS, then a podium may actually be possible for Sergio Perez. He looks strong on tyres, and if tyre wear is going to be high, Sergio Perez is usually a driver who you can count on. So, with that in mind then, what are my final predictions for Sunday's Grand Prix now that we've seen the sprint? Well, in P5, I'm going to go for Fernando Alonso in the Aston Martin. P4 will be Charles Leclerc. P3 will be Lando Norris. P2 will be Sergio Perez, as yes, I do think Norris and Perez will be able to make their way through the field, and Max Verstappen will dominate the Brazilian Grand Prix. But, those are my predictions. The question is though, what are your thoughts? In the comments, let me know, and as always, comment, leave a like, and subscribe for more F1 content. Thank you all so much for watching.